So after nearly a 10 year break, Michael Schofield is of course alive, and Prison Break is finally back. And I gotta say, I didn't have that high of hopes for the new season, but after watching all the episodes that have come out so far, it's been a pleasant surprise. Although it hasn't come close to touching the first season of Prison Break, but that's alright. It would be ludicrous to hold them to that standard. This video contains spoilers for the first four seasons of Prison Break, but not the latest season, so if you're currently watching the earlier episodes, I advise you to click away right now. Alright, here are 30 facts you didn't know about Prison Break. Even after Prison Break ended, Wentworth Miller and Dominic Purcell would still be seeing a lot more of each other. The two were reunited in The Flash, where they played alongside each other as Captain Cold and Heatwave. They even managed to sneak in a couple great Prison Break references. Got it? This isn't my first Prison Break. In the original script, Sarah Tancredi's drug overdose was intended to be a definitive killer back in Season 1. However, plans changed because of a nudge from the network who decided that killing off Sarah would be the wrong move due to her popularity with the fans. Another change of plans involved Robin Tunney who played Veronica in the show, as she was keen to move on to other projects which means that in the end, the writers were almost forced to write her out of the show. The series even inspired an interactive experience. Prison Break Live was a boot camp that promised to replicate the real prison experience, touring the US, Australia, UK, China, Germany, and Mexico from 2006 to 2008. It wasn't just Robin Tunney's character who prematurely met their death or left the show to work on other projects. Lane Garrison, who played David Tweener Apolsky, left his big role to film Shooter with Mark Wahlberg, though the transition was seamless, with the Fox River 8 one by one meeting their demise. John Billingsley was replaced by Jeff Perry for the role of Terrence Stedman, as the actor was busy filming The Nine, while Nadine Velasquez only played Sucre's fiance Mary Cruz in the pilot episode, before leaving to film for My Name is Earl, and was replaced by Camille Guadi for the rest of her run. On the flip side, Rockman Dunbar, who played C-Note, was only intended to feature in two episodes, but he was bumped up to a series regular. In the 1960s, a 16-year-old boy was wrongly imprisoned before being broken out by his brother and spending four years on the run. Sounds very familiar, right? That's the story of Robert and Donald Hughes, who used their experiences and turned their memories into a manuscript before sending it to Fox in 2001. The network turned the story down, though in 2005, Prison Break was born, and a year and a half later, the Hughes brothers filed a lawsuit against Fox. Although nothing really came of it, which kinda sucks if that's how it all went down. It's pretty ironic that the man with the most experience of being behind prison bars is actually actor Stacy Keach, who plays Warden Pope. In 1984, he was sentenced to 9 months in a British jail after being caught in possession of 1.3 ounces of cocaine following an airplane flight. He was released after 6 months and upon his return to America, he vowed to educate others about the serious nature of drug abuse. When Stacy Keach got the role on Prison Break, he based his character on his old prison warden. It's better for me to owe you one in here than it is for you to owe me one, I can promise you that. It's impossible to imagine Prison Break without Wentworth Miller playing the lead role of Michael Schofield. He was an iconic character and remains a legendary TV figure to this day, but Miller very nearly missed out on the role. Sarah Wayne Cowley's was the first member to be cast, and Miller's audition didn't take place until a week before filming began. Johnny Mesner and Eric Dane were the two frontrunners to play Lincoln, but the showrunners couldn't decide between the two and eventually moved on to find Dominic Purcell, who got the job. Wentworth Miller first came to the attention of executive producer Brett Ratner after auditioning to play the Man of Steel in his aborted Superman movie, Flyby. It's hard to tell what is Michael's correct date of birth due to the lack of continuity in the show. For example, in the form Michael fills out during the pilot episode, he writes August 9th, 1978. But when Lincoln finds a picture of their mother pregnant with Michael, he states that there is a mistake because Michael was born in 1976. Finally, on his tombstone in episode 22 of season 4, the date is August 10th, 1974. 
So, take your best guess as to when his real birthday actually is. For much of the first season, there's a sense of intrigue about Charles Westmoreland, a veteran prisoner at Fox River. There were strong indications that he was indeed the infamous D.B. Cooper, but it wasn't confirmed until right before he died during the season 1 escape, showing Michael a $100 note with the serial code matching that of the Cooper money and claiming that he had $5 million instead of $1 million. In real life, D.B. Cooper hijacked a plane by showing a flight attendant a bomb he had hiding in his suitcase. The plane landed in Seattle where Cooper demanded $200,000, four parachutes, and food for the crew. After taking off again, D.B. Cooper jumped out of the airplane somewhere north of Portland and was never heard from again. So it turns out prisons really don't want any of their inmates using Prison Break as inspiration for a breakout. The show is officially banned in 13 prisons across America, while the sale of Prison Break DVDs is informally halted by many others around the country. There was one cell in particular that spooked the crew so bad they wouldn't even enter it. It was the former cell of serial killer John Wayne Gacy, and Dominic Purcell actually occupied it throughout the first season, as he claimed it was the best place for his scenes to be shot. Gacy was convicted of 33 murders along with a string of other violent felonies and was known as the Killer Clown because of his charitable services at fundraising events, parades, and children's parties where he would dress as Pogo the Clown. All of the Fox River prison scenes in Season 1 were shot at Joliet Correctional Center. The prison closed down in 2002, but the cell blocks, yard, and the infirmary were all real. Fox originally turned down Prison Break in 2003, concerned about the long-term prospects of the premise. However, with the popularity of 24 and Lost, Fox changed its mind and started production of the show in 2004. After Fox turned down Prison Break in 2003, it was then proposed as a 10-part miniseries, akin to some of the classic HBO series like Band of Brothers. Even more amazingly, Steven Spielberg was reportedly interested in the project, as well as Bruce Willis, who would have starred in the show, though the idea was yet again shelved before finally being brought to TV as the prison break we all know and love. Prison Break was remade in Russia as Pobeg. Many scenes and pieces of dialogue were copied verbatim, and as with all Russian remakes of American shows, the result was not so good. Prison Break Cherry Hill was in the works in 2007 and would have followed housewife Molly as she was jailed in a woman's prison, but the 07-08 writer's strike in Hollywood cancelled the project. The premise to me sounds exactly like Orange is the New Black, which has been a pretty successful show and it makes you wonder if Prison Break Cherry Hill was released back in 2007, then most likely Orange is the New Black doesn't get turned into a TV show. Prison Break did eventually get a spin-off of sorts. The low-budget Proof of Innocence was released exclusively to mobile phones in 2006. Since the episodes were only available on phones, they were called Mobisodes. I guess that term never really caught on. I didn't do it. This is the guy. Help me, LJ. Dr. Sarah Tancredi's death was a depressing time for everyone watching the show, but it would have never happened if Sarah Wayne Callie's contract issues hadn't resulted in her being written out of the show. Fans, writers, and Callie's herself wanted to continue, though the behind the scenes complications saw her head removed, placed in a box, and sent to Lincoln. She didn't feature in season 3 other than the old set photos used while she was held hostage, but after the fan outrage upon her death, Crunch talks were held, and she reprised her role in the fourth season as a series regular. The original plot was to be about a man who got himself into prison only so that he could try and break out. This concept was initially suggested to Paul Shearing, but he was against it because he saw no logic in the story and couldn't find a way to stretch it long enough to make it into a show. But after he came up with the idea of the brother and the whole conspiracy subplot, Prison Break was born. Perhaps the most iconic image from the entire show is Michael Schofield's tattoo-covered body, which consisted of detailed plans to the prison that he planned on breaking out of. It's a constant feature throughout the show, and was a fantastically impressive work of art, even though it wasn't real. Although Tom Berg, the man who designed Michael's Inc, 
believes it would take 4 years and up to $20,000 to complete the full body tattoo. Instead, Wentworth Miller had to go through 4 hours of makeup to apply the art to his body. Lincoln Burroughs and Theodore Bagwell Or what about Abraham Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt? Could it just be a coincidence that two of Prison Break's main characters are named after US presidents? Maybe not, as Michael Schofield, Benjamin Miles C. Note Franklin, and Alexander Mahone are closely named after the politicians Edward Schofield, Benjamin Franklin, and William Mahone. In addition, Paul Kellerman's surname was inspired by Roy Kellerman, the Secret Service agent riding in the car when John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Three actors from Prison Break signed for The Walking Dead after Prison Break ended. Those include Sarah Wayne Callies playing Lori Grimes, Michael Cudlitz playing Abraham Ford, and Andrew Rothenberg playing Jim. Robert Nepper, who played Teabag, has said that he based Teabag's hairstyle on his old science teacher's hair, as he always had a poofy bit that stuck up in the front. Of the show's 17 regular characters, only two, Veronica Donovan and Sophia Lugo, were never arrested. In episode 20 of season 1, there is a reflection sequence containing the theme song for House MD. Don't think I won't remember what your front steps look like. A TV show in which many of the regular cast members appeared as guest stars. Miller appeared in the episode Charity Case, while Purcell appeared in Fidelity. Sarah Wayne Callies and Robin Tunney also made guest appearances on the show. Lincoln Burroughs was set to be executed by the electric chair, even though this was not the primary execution method in the state of Illinois. The electric chair was included in the script as the death penalty, basically for shock value. The state has since completely abolished the death penalty. Fox River is in fact a real river. It runs through western Chicagoland, near Joliet. Prison Break was actually the first TV show to release a series on Blu-ray. Remember EuropeanGoldfinch.net? It's the online forum Michael mentioned to Sucre as a way to safely communicate with each other. Well, the forum actually existed back in the day. There was a thread called Attention Michael where Sino attempted to set Michael up and a thread entitled, The Bag Still Got The Bag, which had Mahone pretending to be Sucre and again attempting to set Michael up. Thank you guys so much for watching, please leave a like and subscribe. My next video is going to be on Pulp Fiction, which is my all time favorite movie, I think I've watched it over 5 times. Uh, I'm really excited to start making that video, so watch out for that in the near future. Alright, see you guys next time.